The year is 1959. Chrysler needs to make an overhead valve 6 to replace its 218 and 230 aging flathead 6 design. Also to compete with Ford and Chevy who both had overhead valve inline 6s at this point in time. Chrysler wanted to take a different approach. In the late 50s, Chrysler <laughs> was at the top of their game. You have to remember, Chrysler wasn't the company that it is now. Chrysler is like a shell of their former self. Chrysler was an engineering company in the late 50s. They were trying all kinds of outside the box stuff like long tube intake, cross ram, heavy heads, poly heads, swivel seats, translucent steering wheels, the list goes on and on. Anyway, Chrysler needed an overhead valve six to compete with Ford and Chevy. So introducing in 1959, known in Chrysler circles as the G, engine. Plymouth would go on to call the engine the 30D Economy 6. It would eventually be known as the Slant 6 or the Leaning Tower of Power. The Chrysler Slant 6 was designed by William Wirtman. If I pronounce his name wrong, I'm sorry, correct me in the comment section below. And he started with a complete blank sheet of paper, so to speak. Nothing is shared between the flathead engine and the slant six engine. It's also important to note that Chrysler did not invent the engine configuration. Mercedes-Benz used a 30 degree in the 1952 300 SL, because this engine is designed like this, stylists could make the hood lower. Another advantage was the water pump was mounted lateral offset, taking about four inches off the engine length or footprint. Introduced in 1959 for the 1960 model year, Chrysler would offer the Slant 6 in North America until 1983 in cars, 1987 in trucks, 1991 for agricultural, marine, and industrial use. Mexico went until the early 2000s or sometime during the 2000s. Very long engine life production. In the comments section, can you think of an engine that had a longer lifespan than this one? In 1960, there were two versions on offer. A Smaller, 170 cubic inch displacement, 2.8 liter. It went by LG, lower block. Came in three engine displacements using two different blocks. A lower block and a taller block. They all use the same bore with different stroke sizes. 170 cubic inch displacement, slant six, 2.8 liters. It can make up to 117 horsepower at 4,400 RPM with a little bit of a caveat that we will come to later. 155 pound-feet of torque at 2,400 RPM. Bore of 3.4 inches, a stroke of 3.1 inches. Compression is eight and a half to one, features four main bearings. The 170 was offered from 1960 to 1969, being replaced in 1970 by the 198 slant six, which we will come back to. Chrysler also offered in 1960 the 225 slant six. RG, which stood for a raised G, taller block. This engine was good for 145 horsepower, 4,000 RPM, 215 pound-feet of torque at 2,800 RPM. With a bore of 3.4 inches and a stroke of 4.1 inches, compression was 8.5 to 1. It's important to note that in 1960, the 225 only came in cast iron, but between the years of 61 and 63, Chrysler would offer a die-cast aluminum block option for the 225 RG block with more than 52,000 being made between those years. They are troublesome because the cast in nickel iron cylinder liners would delaminate or separate from the aluminum block casting, which is a big problem. Also, they used a special copper asbestos gasket. The aluminum block version weighed about 80 pounds less than the cast iron version. Another issue with the aluminum block was corrosion on the inside of the engine. While on the topic of different variants, from 1960 to 1962, Chrysler offered Hyperpack on the 170 cubic inch displacement slant six. And what that entailed was long tube ram intake manifold with AFB Carter four barrel carburetor, a larger camshaft with a 276 degree duration, heavier springs, push rods, compression ratio raised from eight and a half to 10 and a half. 
It also needed a special exhaust that used dome pistons. It was able to boost power output from the 170 cubic inch displacement from 117 horsepower up to 148 horsepower. The Hyper Pack was recommended for use when using a manual transmission because it needed a higher engine RPM. It ran really poorly in cold conditions. It was more or less like to go racing with a six cylinder with. Super cool option. If you had one in the comment section below, I'm really intrigued about the power that you got out of a 170 cubic inch displacement six cylinder. Between the years of 1965 and 68, Chrysler of Argentina added more carburetors to the 225 slant six, raising power output from 145 horsepower with a single carburetor to 180 horsepower. 1976 through 1978, because of emission regulations, Chrysler offered the Super Six, which added a two barrel carburetor for a little bit more power, baby. It bumped the horsepower from 100 horsepower to 110 horsepower. 170 to 180 foot-pounds, all while improving throttle response and still maintaining compliance with emissions. The 198 cubic inch displacement slant 6 3.2 liters made its debut in 1970 and it replaced the 170 slant 6. The 198 uses the same block as the 225, just a shorter stroke. So if you got a 198, it's very simple to make it a 225 just by increasing the stroke length. It was to be a more powerful base engine option. The 198 was offered for only four years, 1970 through 1974, and was done away with to save on cost. And emissions is what killed this engine because it was just starved for power. After 1974, the 225 Slant 6 was the only engine left in the slant six family with a bore of the same 3.4 inches and a stroke of 3.6 inches horsepower when this engine was first introduced in 1970 it made 125 horsepower at 4400 rpm 180 pound feet of torque at 2000 rpm by 1974 the same engine makes 95 horsepower 145 pound feet of torque emissions killed this engine the slant six was never intended to be a powerhouse of an engine power output of the 225 slant six was 145 horsepower at the high end and it got as bad as 85 horsepower in 81 because of emissions. But the torque was always there, always down low in the RPM range with a power band that was broad. Because of its 30 degree canted design, they would run forever if maintained proper. So why such a great engine design? Why was it discontinued? In 1981, Chrysler went to the Chrysler K platform, front wheel drive. The slant six was too long to put in there horizontally and mount a front wheel drive transmission to it. In short, it just wouldn't fit in the Chrysler K car, so it was discontinued. On the positive side, known as one of the best engines of all time, center of gravity is lower than an upright engine it allows for lower hood clearance engine accessories more accessible against it watch out for the aluminum block not a powerhouse of an engine although with performance upgrades i'm sure you could make it get at least 200 horsepower or somewhere in that vicinity all right now it's time for would you rather cable clutch or hydraulic clutch power steering or manual steering raised lowered or stock suspension all right Different scenario today, out of these four engine choices, which one would you prefer? The 235 Chevy inline six, or 225 Chrysler slant six, or 233 Ford inline six, or 232 AMC inline six. I'm going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free, pause the video. Now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to get both the name of the band and song title, first person to do both correctly, will have their comment pinned to the top of the comment section. Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below or check out our Facebook group that correlates with this YouTube channel. If you don't have Facebook and would like to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, send me an email. All of that will be linked in the description below. Just know I appreciate all of the support. And until next time, here are some scenes for our next episode. 1931 Ford Model A Phaeton. 
That's what's next on What It's Like. Tune in tomorrow at 4.30, hopefully 4.30 Pennsylvania time to catch that one. It might be pushed back a little bit. Tomorrow's probably going to be a double feature day with the Gilmore Auto Museum touring the Model A building as well. Yeah, until tomorrow. Toodaloo! Mark, thank you so much for that. I really appreciate you sending me all those books. It means, it means the world to me. This one, it's a Packard book. And it has all of the information on all the various different models that Packard offered. A lot of this information isn't on the internet. So thank you so much for sending me this book. You also sent me a package with more books in it. And I just wanted to do a real quick unboxing of this. I haven't opened this one yet. So look at all these books and magazines he sent. Thank you so much. I appreciate this. Some of this information is really hard to find on the internet to some of these cars that are really hard to find as well. So thank you so much for all of these books. I really appreciate it. Oh man, this is awesome. Thank you so much. Oh, this is where I do all the videos too. If you ever wondered where I do the videos, right here at the kitchen table. There's a lot of clutter, I'm, I'm sorry. How cool. Look at all the spark plug advertisements. This is so cool, thank you so much.